Welcome to the Our Dad Stamps YouTube channel. My name's Pete West and like a lot of people my age, I started collecting stamps as a child, encouraged by my father who was an avid collector. 20 years ago I inherited his collection and at the same time I also inherited my wife's dad's collection. Since then I've been buying and selling stamps through my online stores at Del Camp and eBay under the name Our Dad Stamps and this has allowed me to grow the collection into what you see behind me. With these videos, I want to share some stories and information that I've learned about stamps and stamp collecting. I hope you enjoy them. And if you do, don't forget to click on the like button and subscribe to get regular updates on new content. Hello and welcome to a, another Our Dad Stamps video podcast. My name is Pete. And I'm Sheila. And what are we talking about today? Well, today I'm actually going to do something slightly different. I'm going to talk about two things with a very tenuous link in between the two. Firstly, we're going to talk about, in light of recent events, how the, the Queen's death is going to affect the world of stamping and what happens to Great Britain stamps now. And then the second thing I want to talk about is just a shameless plug on why I'm going to be breaking up my collection of British stamps and putting them up for auction in the next few weeks. So the first thing, when we're talking about Queen Elizabeth's death and what happens, when are we going to get some King Charles III stamps? And the short answer is probably not for a very long time. When stamps are produced, there's a very long period of planning and uh, preparing before the, you actually get to the stamp. So it's quite impractical to be able to produce a King Charles III stamp within the next few months. What tends to happen and what has happened in the past is the first thing they need to do is approve an official royal photograph that's going to be used for the stamp. Someone, and I don't know who that someone is at the moment, but someone will go and take an official photo of King Charles and he will decide what he's going to wear for the official photo, whether it be military uniform, whether it be civilian uniform, we don't know yet. The photographer obviously takes hundreds of photos and will then select a few that he thinks are best. These are sent to the royal household who make the ultimate decision on which one is going to be used for stamps. And what happened in, in the past with Queen Elizabeth, when Queen Elizabeth ascended to the throne, Dorothy Wilding came and took the photos. As I said, she took several photos and they were used for various odd things. One photo was used as the official photo in all the embassies throughout the British Empire, or the British Commonwealth, sorry, as it was then. One was used for the stamps that we know as the Wilding stamps. So something similar that presumably will happen with, with King Charles. I have to say, I'm just wondering how many people actually use postage stamps these days? I mean, if you think with email, offices don't use stamps. They all got their franking machines and stuff. So how many stamps are actually used on a daily basis? No. Not that many, I wouldn't have thought. It's a good question and one I don't know the answer to. I know it, it certainly is reducing uh, the number of people that use stamps for the reasons you've just said. But the... The Queen Elizabeth definitives, the matching stamps, are still very popular and do get used. So there will have to be something, whether it gets used very much or not, is another question, of course. And, of course, the commemorative stamps are still sold in big numbers to collectors, so they will carry on. So what, once the Royal f Photograph is approved, tenders are invited for various designers to submit their design for a new stamp using that photograph. These are then once again looked at by the post office. The post office chooses the one that they think is best. And in conjunction with the Crown, we'll decide which one actually gets used. And finally, once all that's done, the image is sent to the printers to, to prepare and get the stamps ready. So as you can see, it, it takes a while. 
and it, and it's always been that way. When Queen Victoria died in 1901, it was a year before Edward the Seventh stamps got, were produced. And when it, Edward the Seventh died in 1910, it was even worse because uh, the initial stamp that was produced for King George V was not particularly popular. King George V himself really didn't like the stamps. And so they scrapped, they produced the halfpenny and one penny stamp only, and then scrapped the design completely and had to go back to the drawing board. So with King Edward VII, although he died in 1910, they were still printing stamps with Edward VII's picture on them up until 1913. So as you can see, it, it does take a while. So we could be waiting a couple of years before we actually see Charles III stamps. And the, the post office has actually said that some of the commemoratives that have been approved for release later this year will still go out with the Queen's image on them. So there is, at the end of September, there is um, a commemorative for the Royal Marines, which has, that's only a few days away really, so that's already been printed and ready, so they're not going to change that one. But also the Christmas stamp that's due out on the 3rd of November, the design is in place with the Queen's head and commemorative about Tutankhamun as well and later in November has already been approved. So those will most likely go out with Queen Elizabeth's head on them, even though she's not around anymore. And did they not produce another stamp for the Queen's Platinum Jubilee? Yeah, they've already been released, so they are out. So they did produce one for that? Yeah. Yeah, there's a set that's uh, that's been released. I can't remember the date they were released. They were released, but uh, they're already out there. Yes. The other thing that the post office have said as well is that, in in line with previous customs, the actual post boxes will change as well. Because on the side of post boxes there is the the royal crest, and at the moment it has E two R on it for Elizabeth II, and that will change to C. 3R. Now whether it's a Roman numeral 3 or whether it's an ordinary 3 is still up for debate. But they will change. However, they're not going to take away all the old post boxes and replace them with new ones. It's just when a new one needs to be made, it will be made with Charles's crest on it. In the past, that's been a consideration with stamps as well because of watermarks on the stamps. When George V came to the throne, the stamps were watermarked with a GVR on the back for George V. And when Edward VIII came to the throne, it had E8R. It was a normal A, it wasn't a Roman numeral A. Uh, but obviously now we don't, have post, uh, we don't have watermarks on stamps, so presumably that won't be a consideration and won't be included on any of the stamps. But anyway, that's what's going to happen. So it's probably going to be quite a while before we see any stamps with King Charles's head on. What they will look like is anyone's guess at this stage, but it does give us stamp collectors something else to look out for and something to collect. I thought I'd include that just at the beginning to um, in memory of the sad occasion from last week. But the second part of the video podcast, I wanted to talk about... Um, my Great Britain stamp collection and why I've decided to split it up and to sell it off. Several years ago, probably about four or five years ago, I bought two Windsor albums uh, with stamps in them. The Windsor albums are produced by Stanley Gibbons and they have a space in them for every stamp that has been produced by Great Britain. So when you get your collection, you know exactly where it's going to go in the album they come with mounts already there, or you can use your own mounts, it depends which type you buy. And they are quite handy for people starting out because you can easily see where you've got gaps, you can easily see what you're missing. And when you get new stamps, you don't have to shuffle everything around because there's a specific space for them. However, after buying the albums and building up the collection, I decided I didn't like the layout of the way they've done it, the way Stanley Gibbons have done it in the, in the Windsor album. It's largely done in chronological order. And those of you that have watched my video on collecting Victorian stamps will know that I find it much more pleasing on the eye, and in my view, much better to, to sort the Victorian stamps out by 
value. So I've got all the, all the penny stamps together, all the tuppy stamps together, all the two and a half P stamp, uh, two and a half D stamps, and so on together, which I think looks much better. So I sort of abandoned the the Windsor albums and went on to collect separately and make my own. And, and so these albums have sat there for a few years, and I thought it's about time I did something with them and and approached a few auction houses about selling them and, and to see what sort of value they would put on it to buy. And I was quite disappointed with the response I got. So after a lot of thought, I decided that I would sell them myself. Now, bearing in mind, the, the Windsor album, you can't buy it now. They don't make it in Sally Gims anymore, but you can buy the pages. You can still buy replacement pages. And to buy a whole set of blank pages with no stamps on them whatsoever would cost you £150 still. So with one that's full of stamps, you can see that I was expecting quite a reasonable amount back from them. And, and really it wasn't anywhere near that from the auction houses. So I thought about selling it myself, as I said, either on eBay or Katowiki or Del Camp, one of, them, one of the ones I use. But the problem with that is the postage. To post one of the albums from Spain costs 45 pound, uh, sorry, 45 euros. So that's gonna be 45 euros off what people are prepared to pay for my stamps. So you're talking about the empty album, but with the pages in, but no, no stamps? No, now I'm talking about the, to post the full album as it is now, if I sold the full album as it now, complete with stamps. With complete with stamps. Complete okay. with stamps, it would cost me 45, 45 Pounds. euros to, euros, to post. Okay. Um, now obviously that's that's 45 euros that people won't pay for in, in, in the stamps. So it seemed to me an expensive way to do it. And reluctantly, I've decided to split it up and sell it. Some of it, depending on the value, some of it page by page, some of it several pages at a time. And although I think it's a shame to break up the, what is a very good collection, from a purely financial point of view, I think I'm likely to make more money doing it that way, because obviously the postage for sending a couple of sheets is, is next to nothing. So in a few weeks time, probably towards the end of October, there will be a whole album of Great Britain stamps Starting from Queen Victoria, including a few Penny Blacks and Tuppy Blues, going right up to modern day Queen Elizabeth stamps. They will be going out for sale on eBay. Please have a look out. You might be interested and you might get some bargains. But why are you actually selling this collection? Because I decided I was really interested in Queen Victoria British stamps. The rest of them are not. Uh, uh, on nice stamps, but I don't find it as fascinating. Queen Victoria era is, a, is an amazing era for, uh, particularly in British stamps, is an amazing time for collecting stamps. There are so many varieties. There was so much to look out for. So I wanted to specialise in Victoria and by selling the King's Elizabeth stamps, I could then afford some more of the Victorian stamps, which naturally enough are that cheap. But I decided because I didn't like the lay the layout of the Windsor album, I actually started c making my own collection completely separate from the Windsor album, funnily enough. And that is fairly complete now. So the reason I'm selling the, all this lot is to try and make some more money to uh, boost my collection. And uh, hopefully, as I said, that will be happening soon. So uh, please keep looking. Okay. Thank you very much for listening and uh, we'll see you again in a couple of weeks time. Thank you for listening to the podcast. I hope you found it interesting and enjoyable. Don't forget you can visit my online stores at eBay and Dell Camp under the name of Our Dad Stamps where I have over 2,000 items for sale. Please join us again in two weeks time for another edition of Our Dad Stamps podcast.